good morning good afternoon good evening as the place you are in afom welcomes you for the afom school webinar and this is the fourth webinar in the series which we started in the month of june 2021 in addition to afom monthly webinars which has started last year in june 2020 and we are continuing this thing so this afom uh, school webinar has been arranged by professor jin shians and entire team is from china there are three speaker professor wengong hu from the shanghai and he will be speaking on the history of radiotherapy physics because the main theme is the evolution of medical physics the second talk is by professor jidong li from hongzhou china and he will be talking on the development of radiotherapy technology third talk is from professor fu jin from chongqing and he will be talking on modern radiotherapy technology and machines during the talk you whatever queries question you have please do type into the chat box today's moderator professor jin shians will take up the questions and put to the speaker and will have a satisfactory answer for you just i would like to tell you that afom is doing lot of activities you can visit the afom website and you look at those this year's aocmp 2021 will be into a hybrid mode and the venue it will be in now dhaka uh, earlier it was the cox bazar but now it has been shifted to dhaka and this will be in a hybrid mode and the registration fees are very very minimal if you are not able to attend in person you can join online uh, the abstract submission date is going to be 20th of september last day so please some time is there you can try to submit we have started many awards into the form and now one more ongoing uh, award is professor sung seal chu a form best publication award for the medical physics msc and phd so there is still time so you can communicate to your students colleagues to submit uh, with this uh, brief introduction uh, i just talked about the eminent speakers will be there professor jin shians will be moderating he is a very very well known figure to all of us because he is the chair of education and training committee in this many webinars and schools jin shians is a vice dean of the school of basic science uh, of wonjao medical university chief medical physics and director of the department of radiotherapy center of the first affiliated hospital in wonjao medical university wonjao he is the chair of education and training committee of afom a very uh, active participating contributing to this thing he is uh, uh, the editor, associate editor reviewer for many national international journals he has published over 90 uh, papers and made that and he has a huge huge contribution with uh, this uh, short introduction without spending more time uh, i will hand over the floor to professor jin shians to introduce the first speaker and start moderating this afom fourth afom school webinar this is over to professor jin shians now floor is yours thank you very much dr aaron thank you for your introduction especially thank you uh for introduce the uh, something about the iphone at new meeting which will be Uh, the abstract submission is the deadline of abstract submission is close i think it was 20 uh, september so if you any anything to submit for the iphone annual meeting please go ahead and i think it's only two days left so now uh welcome to attending today's uh, iphone school uh, 
webinar. Uh, for this time, we are luckily invited three speakers, all from China. So they will talk about something about the, the evolution of our medical fix. So I would like to introduce the first speaker uh, is Professor Wei Ganghu. He's the uh, vice director and the chief medical physics physicist uh, in the Department of Radi Radiation on College at the Fudan University Shanghai uh, Cancer Center. He's also the chair of the radiotherapy physics uh, group of the Radiation on College Committee of uh, our Chinese Medical Association. Professor Hu got his research training in uh, UCSF in 2009 and 2010, and obtained his PhD in the radiation on college from Fudan University in 2015. His research focuses on uh, deep learning in radiotherapy, radiomics, and uh, treatment outcome modeling, automatic treatment planning, and the QA, also motion management. And the topic today he's going to share with us uh, the history of radiotherapy physics. So now uh, let's welcome Dr. Wei Ganghu to give us the first uh, speech. Uh, please share your screen. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Jing. And first of all, I wanted to thank Dr. Aaron for arranging such very good school. And I'm very pleased to be here to share with some, uh, some experience or some knowledge about medical physics first and then about uh, radiation therapy physics. So first of all, let's share the screen. Just wait a second. So the yes. topic, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 visible everything. Yeah. So the topic of my uh, presentation is the history of radiotherapy physics. Uh, this talk actually is very interesting. And uh, actually, I learned a lot for the past two weeks for preparing uh, this topic. So history is like a mirror that can be used to guide the evolution of a present and it can be illuminated the future through reflection of the past. Uh, this word is came from Dr. Um, Hai Yun. Uh, he's from Korea and uh, in and uh, his, his uh, review paper about the history of radiation therapy technology. And uh, I think this, this word is very similar to what happened in Chinese history. Um, using history as a mirror, you can know the rise and the fall. This is the old, old Tang Dynasty book. And uh, that is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, primarily talked to uh, the, uh, his, his uh, as in the primary town, Tang Taizong. <laughs> so it's a very interesting history. And for us, I think for the history, we can know how it was and how it is and how it will be. So for the metaphysics, we wanted to know how it was, how it is and how metaphysics will be in the future. So um, metaphysics, Usually we think metaphysics began in 19, uh, 1895 on, December, on November 8th. That, at that time, it's, a, it's in the, not very dark in the evening, a 50 year old German professor, is famous as the Rottingen, discovered X3. And we think the metaphysics from there, but actually this marks only the start of medical radiation physics, not medical physics. And uh, actually, I think the physicists will play their science to medicine for centuries, even thousands of years. So actually metaphysics, if in this definition or from this kind of meaning, we can, we can uh, see that metaphysics, metaphysics has the history for more than thousands of years. So give some example. In China, actually in ancient China, even uh, the acupuncture and the Marx version have a history of more than 2,000 years. Usually in China, maybe like 5,000 years, uh, the ancient 
uh, use the acupuncture for treatment for uh, treat body. And the Hippocrates described the how skin temperature distribution could be mapped to use wet clay. Hippocrates is like, I think it's the um, BC 507. So it's almost uh, 2000 years. And the centurion is 1561 to 1636, took a measurement technique from physics and applied it successfully in medicine and psychology. So, and so last a lot of a lot of, uh, things happened in the past uh, centuries and for the, using some physics in the medicine. And the first use of a term metaphysics was in Paris in 1778. For now it's almost like 250 years. The term was introduced by the general secretary of the site Royal de Medicine. It's called, it's also a French, uh, Frexy, Fichy, and the Dianstery. And in, in, the, in the 1791, Comte de Fropa ranched a short life journal. It's in France. And in this introduction to the first issue, he lays out his physician. The study of medicine, uh, with study, uh, we study with the study of physics. It is not possible to be a doctor without being a physicist. So when I learned this sentence, I found it very interesting and very uh, full of ambition because we are medical physicist. We should be no physicist and medicine. That means we are on a way to with the knowledge of physics to move to the knowledge of medicine. Although we are not doctor, still we need some physics and uh, medicine knowledge. And as you all know, Nohel may recently be named as the foundation fellow of the medical physics. And in December, uh, 1794, he was appointed as a professor of medical physics and hygiene at the New Echo de Center School of Health in Paris. So medical physics has nowadays become associated with the diagnosis and treatment of disease. And for her, physics were equally associated with the preservation, preservation and enhancement of a health life. And eventually, a definition of medical physics emerged. In the, in the 1840, the first edition of the Nystern's Medical Dictionary. So the definition is remarkable for its completeness, accuracy, and consensus. Physics applied to the knowledge of a human body, to its preservation, and to the cure of its illness. I do believe. This definition is full of, um, full of uh, remarkable for its company's accuracy for medical physics. So we need to know, know the knowledge of human body and we need to cure the illness and we need to preservation the healthy of a human. So that's, I think, the, our ambition for medical physics beyond the Actually, not only for radiation physics, it's all, all metaphysics should do this kind of things. So 19th century metaphysics was dominated by psychological physics, uh, fixed applied to knowledge of human body. And the early 20th century, the emphasis moved toward the use of physics, physical techniques in the diagnosis and the cure for illness. And for this kind of definition, we can see the medical physics is from a pretty widely uh, application to very, I uh, think, very advanced or very uh, tedious uh, application. And the modern trend in medicine uh, re-emphasizes the importance of the health, lifestyle, and the environment. So when I learn of all this kind of information, I do believe that. Uh, 
the ancient people for all the foreign, our forecast uh, give us some very good example or very good experience to shed the wave, what we should to focus on and what we should to move in the future. We need to re-emphasize the importance of healthy lifestyle and environment because like cancer, cancer, uh, the, the cancer has, for the cancer people, uh, patient, the treatment currently can um, can prolong the life of them and how to improve like the healthy lifestyle and the health, how to improve the environment to uh, prohibit the effect of cancer is what we wanted to do. Maybe it's a very important area for us to focus in further research. So with increase in aging population. It may be accepted that the 20, 21st century, we are still the full range of, of physical concept and the method being applied of more and more professional health in addition to the percent focus of the cure of the disease itself. So what we should do in the future, it actually gives us some example in the, uh, in the 19th and the 20th centuries. Oh, give us uh, so many history and the stories about the metaphysics. So let's back to the beginning in 19, uh, in 1895, uh, Dr. Renchen, uh, Renchen discovery X3 marks the start of medical radiation physics. And from that on, the, using the X3 for some um, raised for treat cancer or get imaging has been widely spread in the whole world. So you can find it in 1896 and 1898, the discovery of urium and radium by Bickler and Curry's or open a widening, uh, open a wider door for research and develop of using X ray and some um, irradiation treatment. So they get, both of them get the Nobel Prize. From this kind of view, we can, now we can think the medical physics usually focused on two areas. It's imaging, use X-ray or gamma ray or kind of other kind of uh, physical method to get imaging uh, from MI imaging, PET imaging, state imaging, ultrasound, and even uh, like uh, gamma ray imaging aspect. And the second thing is uh, therapy fix. Mostly is radiotherapy physics is what most of us do. Uh, our job is radiotherapy fix. So when we mention the radiotherapy physics of this topic from this historic uh, kind of view, I wanted to see it's uh, similar to metaphysics. Sometimes somebody did something. So let's focus on radiotherapy and uh, begin a story. In on January 29th, 1896, and it's just three, three days after announcement discovery X3. Uh, the Grabby com company applied X3 for the first time in the cancer treatment. At the suggest from Dr. Uh, Luderman. So the first treatment is applied in breast cancer. And it's a single treatment for last almost one hour. So just like now, we use the MR, MR linear to treat the first, term, first the treat, uh, patient is also one hour. But now you wait for our X-ray, like from Linux, you treat like less than five minutes. So in the future, uh, the speed will, uh, the treatment will be, will be faster and faster at the trend. And in 1896, this patient named Begin using radiotherapy in France, and the patient with stem cancer will be eradicated with 
uh, erratic 15 to 30 minutes with each fraction, but that's really different from what we used to now. And, uh, and at length, it was reported like this is improved and the pain was relieved. So even in those kind of treatment technique, you can see the outcome is pretty good. You can relieve the pain. So sometimes it get us to the, to thinking, oh, we need to focus on some we call the uh, radio radiology or radio. So what you need to uh, how to to use the fraction dose or what the uh, biology uh, aspect of bi of biology research should be focused on. In 1899, uh, and back published the results of the first successful treatment of rodent ulcer and uh, epistolema in Sweden. And in 19th, uh, Stan Beck and uh, Sean Green treated patients with skin cancer at the tip of the nose. And after that, three years later, Sam first attempted to treat a leukemia patient. So we found that when an analogy or a technique is found the, the operation is very fast and the outcome, the outcome is pretty good and it will improve very quickly. And the initial, we can, what, what looks initial radiotherapy is, you can see it's very low energy with significantly low penetrative power because it uses very low X ray. And the, I always no concept of radiation dose, or sometimes no very clear location of the tumor, and have no idea of the hazards of radiation exposure. So all these problems they they concern almost no concept in my mind. So when you did this kind of research or did this this kind of thing, something to to lose kind of time is how about the dose imaging. In 1902, we do of Australia uh, initiated the first pr proposal for rentgen based dose image. And uh, almost 26 years later, the use of an ionization chamber was then adopted at the first association of um, international radiology conference in the home, so we did stuck home. And the last, I raised a, a question about the low energy. So at the last time, the energy is pretty low, you should less than 150 kilofrotage. And it was found there. Why the superficial tool could be treated very low, very low energy extra more penetrate high energy beam were required to reach tumors inside the tumor. And uh, the clinic required more high voltage. And also voltage x rays is the use of the tumor voltage of 200 to 500 kilo voltage began to be used during the 1920s to reach the most deep buried tumors with exposing uh, interference scale and the tissue to danger those require risk with more than one megavoltage or above. So after that, the time of a megavoltage radiation begins. So for that one, a lot of stories comes. In 1924, Gustav Easter proposed the idea of a linear set, uh, asset rate in Sweden. And three years later, could you use the cascade tubes to obtain 900 kilofold uh, X-ray? And one year later, Rolf from Norway invented the bit churn and get a linear concept to, to work. And in 1929, Van de Graaff built its prototype generator. And in 1931, the, the cyclotron was invented by Lawrence and the 19. 1937, fixed the fabric cockroach water generator in London. And in the 1937, the very brass invented the crystal. 
And two years later, Mectron was developed. And uh, in 1943, the Bechtron, Bechtron was available for medical use. And then in 1948, Gurmet produced the first practical proposal for patient identification use of cobalt 60. So it's almost in like 20 years, it's a huge achievement in uh, make voltage accelerate and uh, research and the uh, prototype generator was developed and applicated. In 1951, the first medical cobalt was uh, unit was was used in Saskatoon, and in the same year, Lixell introduced radio surgery, radio surgery. And in 1952, the first dedicated medical Laneker, it's a the voltage machine built. I um Matron Preton Victors was installed in uh, Hammersmith Hospital in London. And the first patient was treated in 1953. You can see at the lifetime the treated is easy, just the, just like uh, we focused on the uh, the head to to the patient or to the tumor. It's not a, a lot of idea of where, uh, what the, like the shape, like the energy or the dose, it's just to treat it. In 1954, the first medical proton in at the Berkeley Laboratory and the first the cancer patient was treated in Gustav uh, Werner Institution. In, in 1957 in Sweden. And in 1958, the first computerized treatment system was, was developed. And in 1959, the MLC was patented, but not commercially available until 1984. At the same time, in 1958, the gamma knife was served in the Stockholm. And copper beam, copper six beam therapy. Uh, with Megford gamma rays become the common treatment in most radio state department in the 1950s to 1960s. And it list, and a lot of time led to a lot of researches. And a lot of time has become known as the first uh, radio therapy period. So at a lot of time, a lot of metaphysics is actually do some work work on like, like those calculation or just very simple work, not very easy. But at the last time, a lot of very, I think very tired uh, metaphysics that divided a lot of things to enhance this area and uh, enhance the radio therapy researches. However, compared with the cobalt therapy, the Linux produced a low level of flex and accurate radio beam. And also, stand the Linux can be simple of without uh, any uh, irradiation and it's very safe and uh, no source requirement. So, the Linux do, do not, and the Linux do not produce radioactive waste with the attendant dispose problem. Then, it thinks in 1960s, so the era of Mac voltage. Uh, we call the uh, the next coming, and we can load all these important inventions and application of technology recipe were the work of a physicist and engineer. This word is from Stephen Webby, the the editor of PMB. Uh, although he said in those time, those physicist and the engineer may be not think of themselves as medicists medical physicist, but actually they did the medical physics work. So after that, during the days of COBOL 60, and, in, and also the initial, uh, initial model of Megafort Linux, treatment we use, we call the 2D treatment because 
we only like uh, get a very uh, simple way to treat a patient as to what we see from the skin or from X-ray image. And in 1959, Takahashi put forward the concept of conformal radiotherapy and invented the MLC to implement the conformal radiotherapy. And before, before that, usually for get the conformal uh, field, we use like uh, lead to get the shape. But with MLC, it's more easy and can be very uh, can be computerized. So after that, one important thing happened to metaphysics is the development of uh, X3 CT. And the commercial X3 CT has been regarded as the greatest revolution in radiology since dis discovered X3. And uh, the hospital received the Nobel Prize in 1979, and the pioneer of Aaron Carmack shared the Nobel Prize because he did a lot of laboratory experiment in 1963. And actually, the principle was, was published in, uh, was uh, mentioned in 1940. Also, computer begins to be widely used in the 1970s and 1980s, and the lows lead to the micro progress in radio treatment planning use radiation images. And the many research studied the treatment plan related topics and produced many reports. Those kind of research is mostly did by medical physicists. Hospital's invention of CT scans in 1971 changed the clinic in 1980s. And after that, with the use of computers in radiotherapy planning, radiation delivery gradually shifted from 2D to 3D. And the CT-based simulation and planning allowed the radiotherapy to get the dose depiction and the more precise and accurate. Since the 1980s, the higher energy Linux was widely introduced because of the, the Linux has a lot of advantage over uh, Cobalt 60. And after that, the computer system and system were also introduced, I think also with the MLC, the help us to shape the patient a secret tumor to get a conformal dose. And actually in click news is from 1990, for the uh, computer treatment play system of 3D. The introduction of the treatment, treatment planning system uh, allows more accurate planning for full improvement, accurate dose calculation for uh, to get the dose distribution, distribution. And those symmetry dramatically improved with the use of a new detect because we needed to know the accurate dose for patient and the accurate dose to how to uh, treat the patient and the prepare the uh, organic risk and prepare the human. And, and after that, the unit of regret was replaced by the uh, gray. And the quarter assurance was introduced to harmonize the accuracy of the dose distribution with the help of the National Laboratory of Dose Symmetry. And it's, uh, last to now. A second important thing happened to metaphysics in recipe is the invention of the technology derived MIT. And uh, Brigham, the Swedish metaphysics, introduced the MIT in 1988, and uh, McCarroll, the CEO of Enormous Cor Corporation, announced the invention of the word first uh, commercial. MIT delivery equipment, mimic, we call mimic in 1992. And actually at the same time, the MLC uh, based MRT were also uh, investigated at the same time. And the, the principle of 
MIT was explained by George Bacall. So the MIT gives us, especially from medical physics and the radiation oncology, the new step. And uh, Brigham proposed to change the pleasant uh, shape of coronator into light of um, MLC and the uh, uh, Sandtronics company in Prefect. In 1992, the, as I mentioned, the uh, Normus released the commercial one MRT. And in 1998, MRT realized using technology developed by memory through clustering. And the same year, the idea of MIT, MLC delivered MIT from a step should mode or dynamic mode or clinical established. In, 19, in 2000, the actual MRT was applied to clinical practice. From this kind of history, we can see the MRT developed its long time. So along with MRT, the history from that, I think all of us are very familiar and it's open a new direction and a new development of radiotherapy physics. We need to move for more accurate, more efficiency and more effective. So currently, because we wanted to achieve the straight goals, so develop some image guided therapy, you may use some image modality to get more accurate or more efficient or more effective. Sometimes your functional imaging, we wanted to get a better outcome or predict outcome, you get more effective in the treatment. And also have new concept of a radio therapy device or develop like Tomo, it's very very similar idea from CT. How Heisen, Heisen is very similar idea from Tomo, like a step and shoot CT or like a combi beam CT. Also from Stack Knife for get a very uh, accurate image guided therapy. Uh, also MRT, and the developer in delivery techniques will be from move from MRT to FEMAT. Also, because of the very accurate treatment delivery, we needed to get uh, accurate delivery of without uh, the interference from some uh, effect from motion. So the effect are brought of knowledge on motion management. Also, we are not uh, limited to the uh, use X-ray or gamma ray. We need to use to other proton or carbon particles to treat cancer. And uh, with the development of other field, we focused on like wisdom and auto of treat planning or treatment delivery. So with artificial intelligence implemented in the radiotherapy, the wisdom radiotherapy or automatic radiotherapy will be our future direction. So, so far, it's a lot of topics or research about using the artificial in radio therapy. Also, for get better treatment, we needed to analyze what we learned from those kind of data achieved from clinical trials that have happened or is still happening. And we needed to use some technology to uh, get outcome or get treatment analysis we call the data mining so it's for our bed or for more effective treatment and so on so i think for the future of radiotherapy physics beyond those kind of what mentioned here we still need to focus on what mentioned 200 years ago i think i need to re-emphasize this one uh, go back go back to this way, it's what we said, we need to uh, cure the cancer. And also we need to how to get involved in environment, get our environment more comfortable and reduce the cancer uh, different ratio. 
So that's what we made to need to know about the real physics from the medical physics. And this is the whole work, uh, whole development uh, time trend I get from uh, the, this paper. It's past the present and the future of real therapy for the benefit of the patient. And uh, it's a very good summary for the, what we need to know from the discovery area, kilo voltage area, and the mega voltage area, even to the particle areas. And technology is always evolving, and we need to pay more attention to the patient itself instead of technology in the future. That's in my opinion. Uh, and hope in the future, we need to apply more physics, the physics of the human body, the physics of the nature, and even the, 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 the physics of the, uh, the whole society to cure the people, uh, cure the patient, and get a more healthy life for all of us. Thank you for all of you to hear for this a uh, very brief introduction of medical, phys medical physics. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hu, for the wonderful talk. You give us uh, from the beginning of the discovery of X-ray uh, to the COBO-60 to Linux, and then late with the introduction of the CT into radiotherapy, radiation oncology, we actually moved from 2D to 3D uh, radiotherapy. Then lately, uh, with the development of the IMRT, the radiotherapy actually beginning a new area as for our medical physics. So uh, thank you very much. Now uh, we will move to our next speaker, uh, Professor uh, Li, uh, Xia Dong Li. Uh, Professor Li is from the Hangzhou First People's Hospital. And currently he's the a uh, member of the standing committee of the hypersomia of the tumor study group of Chinese Medical Association. He's also the vice chairman of the radiation physics and technology techniques of Anti-Cancer Association of Zhejiang Province. Committee member of Radiation Oncology of Anti-Cancer Association of Zhejiang Province. Uh, also a uh, Committee member or expert group of sent of tumor therapy control quality or Hanzhou. So he's going to give us the uh, talk on the development of the radio therapy technologies. So please, uh, Dr. Lee, it's all okay. on yours. Uh, Okay, uh, good, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, today, I will uh, present the development of the radiation therapy technology and the machines. So first of all, I would like to express my thanks to Professor Jing for his invitation and introduction. Um, in AM, AFOMP, and so I have this opportunity to share uh, our, our experience in the history of the technology in fighting against cancer. Uh, so uh, uh, today I will uh, I will introduce the history of radiation therapy technology uh, from nine parts in our content. Uh, so first, uh, let's come to the dis uh, discovery of X-ray and the beginning of radiation radiation therapy. Uh, first, let, uh, as we all know, this is a common check for this type of course. The so first tumor treatment by X-ray uh, in human was breast cancer. Uh, as you can imagine, more than 100 years ago, uh, the pressure uh, on women uh, was also great. So the initial radiation therapy relied on low uh, energy with significantly low uh, penetration power. There was uh, neither an exact concept of the radiation dose nor the location of tumors. So it's the early period of radiation therapy technology. 
And when uh, the time comes to the 1950s to the 1960s, the COVID-16 beam uh, uh, therapy, emit, uh, as we all know, it will emit megavoltage gamma rays has become common treatment in most uh, radiation uh, departments and lead to much uh, research. Uh, only in the middle of the 20th, 20th century were exact dosimetry system developed. And in 1970s, high energy line accelerator uh, like uh, 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 photon and uh, multi energy and electron beam capacities become increasingly available for clinical use. Uh, since 1980s, high energy lenses were widely introduced, and then the computed treatment planning, uh, TPS, uh, was also introduced. So we can say that we, uh, after 1990s, we have entered the uh, process treatment era. Uh, so uh, let's come to the first uh, topic: the clinical, uh, the classical radiation therapy. Uh, here we show the electron beam therapy. Uh, as as we all know, the energy range from uh, four or six to twenty uh, 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 mega electron volts, uh, and uh, it is also uh, it was used to treating superficial tumors. Only uh, the deep of the tumors is five centimeters less. Uh, with uh, it can get we can get a sharp uh, drop off in the dose beyond the tumors. So the electron beam therapy was used to treat some some uh, skin and lip cancers, chest wall uh, cancers, just like uh, uh, breast cancers, and uh, and to administrating both the dose to the nose and the treatment of head and neck cancers. Uh, this is the uh, dose distribution uh, for low dose rate of breath therapy. So uh, breath therapy is a cancer treatment uh, in which radioactive uh, material sealed inside a seed uh, where or capsules is impal impaled in the body using a needle or, or cancer. So radiation gives for fill off by this source damages the DNA of the nearby cancer cells. So we can uh, conclude the advantage of the BRAC therapy here. Uh, the BRAC therapy can use for uh, three uh, aspects. First one is superior forms of conformal radiotherapy and uh, tightly achievable dose distribution uh, of any modern radiotherapy treatment and also allows us for dose escalating for beyond, far beyond what is safe uh, compared with EBRT alone. Uh, this is some uh, guidelines from NCCN uh, about uh, the total dose we can use to, to prescribe the, for low dose rate uh, modern therapy. Uh, it, is of, it is often used one fraction uh, for 145 grays when, when the uh, I don't 125 uh, used or 125 grays for uh, plodum uh, 103 used. The corresponding boost dose after uh, 40 to 50 gray EBRT are 100 grays and uh, uh, 19 to 100 grays for I don't one, two, five, and the pardon, one, zero, three, respectively. So here we uh, in the table of the physical characteristic of radio uh, cradles used in black therapy, a total of eight uh, radio no, uh, no series was summarized in the half life, uh, half life photon energy, half-value layer, and exposure rate constant. Uh, so uh, when let's, uh, let's move to the three-dimensional conformal radiotherapy. Three-dimensional conformal radiotherapy is a cancer treatment that shapes the radiation beams to match the 
shape of the tumor in all beam directions. In all beam directions, uh, in the past, radiation uh, beams only match the height and the width of the tumor. So it will expose in healthy, if exposing healthy uh, tissue to radiation. Uh, advances in imaging technology have make it, made it possible to locate and treat the tumor more precisely. <clears throat> uh, this slide introduces the treatment planning process of three-dimensional conformal radiotherapy. Similar steps must be done before a three-dimensional uh, radiotherapy plan was finished. Sometimes it will be quite uh, time-consuming uh, time uh, when a complex uh, and tonometrical structure was encountered because you should make an optimal decision on which direction of the beam with a proper weight. So this will very challenging for some young physicists. And uh, here is a, a three-dimensional radiotherapy uh, example. A beam, a beam I view uh, three, uh, from three directions. Uh, with the, uh, with advance with advancement of the material and the computer science, our radiation therapy has also entered the MRT era. In testing moderated radiation therapy or MRT, um, is a uh, is a type of cancer treatment that uh, use advanced computer um, programs to calculate the uh, to calculate and deliver radiation. Uh, directly to cancer cells from the, uh, different angles. From a physical uh, point of view, a non-uniform uh, fibrance uh, is delivered to the patient from any given position of the treatment beam to optimize the composite, uh, composite dose distribution. Uh, we, we, uh, we can summarize the five benefits of the MRT First is dose radio, uh, reduction to normal tissue. The second one is dose escalating to target structure. And it will also improve target coverage of complex tumor shape. Uh, for example, the prostate case. Uh, we can find the bladder and the rectum wrapped as the, the target of the prostate cancer. And uh, uh, it, the MIT also has the ability to deliver different dose to different targets, uh, it it means uh, we have uh, we 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 can uh, deliver MRT dose uh, to two uh, dose fraction types, and the final one uh, uh, when the MRT used, we can uh, get the ideal reduction uh, reducing dose for critical for critical structures. So uh, let's talk about something about uh, the pretty simple of the uh, MRT. Uh, as we can see from the pictures that uh, the left uh, side is a uh, 3D CRT and uh, the, the right one is MRT. Uh, the red one was a uh, tumor and the green one is the organ at rex that we want to protect. So when the 3D, uh, three dimensional conformal radiotherapy technique was applied, uh, um, so those distribution uh, may not be quite good to sparing the organ at risk. So we can use uh, the MRT techniques. So can uh, so let's talk about uh, how the MRT dose distribution was realized. This is an example for uh, head and neck. So when uh, three dimensional CRT was applied. So the so ISO dose line was uh, not good for uh, OAS sparing, but uh, when we use MRT, we can find that the brainstem and uh, and the applied gland was well protected. So how does it uh, realized? The so MRT requires at least two systems. Uh, the first one is our treatment planning computer system. And the second one is a system of delivering the non-uniform fluids as planned. As planned. <clears throat> uh, uh, this, uh, this slide uh, 
uh, we demonstrated the access Linux used in OR Center. And, uh, and the main MIT delivery uh, techniques have three aspects. The first one is step and shoot. And the second one is sliding window, or usually used in varying systems. And the second one, third one was VMAT or rapid arc. And uh, sometimes uh, we, we can use uh, uh, the Tomon therapy systems. The Tomon therapy systems was uh, uh, well used in China, uh, in China as uh, they up, uh, updated uh, as, we, as, as we know that there are 50 uh, Tomon therapy systems uh, in China now. Tomon therapy is a radiation therapy modality uh, in which the patient is scanned, just like the CT scanner, scanned across uh, moderated strip beams, so that the only one silence of the target is exposed at any one time by the line accelerator beam. Uh, the three components distinctive to this modality, the first one is uh, a collimeter pair of the uh, of the defined the length of this chip. And the second one is a special M MLC, a special uh, multi-leave uh, collimeter. Uh, it's a binary MLC whose leaves have two, uh, two, two, uh, have two style, only one, uh, one steps for open and zero step stands for close during the treatment to moderate uh, the chips intensity. And the third one is a coach that scan, scans the patient across the beam at a fixed speed in during treatment delivery. So uh, let's talk about something uh, about the modern radiotherapy techniques, just like SRS or SBRT. Um, SRS, which we as, as known as uh, a theoretic radio surgery was conceived by a, chi, chi, by a team of neurosurgery and a physicist in Sweden about 50 uh, years ago to deliver radiation to process uh, targets in the brain uh, while mi uh, minimizing the injury to the adjacent areas. So, uh, it to use the sophisticated three uh, dimensional uh, radio, radiation therapy techniques uh, to precisely focus photon beams, delivery a high concentrated dose of radiation to a precise target in a single session. So, stereotic radio surgery is not surgery uh, in the conventional sense because there is no incension involved and generally and general. And the CESA is not required for adults. So uh, this slide demonstrates uh, traditional SIS equipment. Uh, we, we call it gamma knife. Uh, the gamma knife is a common SIS equipment uh, used in many modern radiotherapy centers. It delivers radiation to a target lesion in the brain by stimulus irradiation with a large number of ISO uh, centric gamma ray beams. Uh, a large number of cobalt 16 source are houses uh, in a hemispatial orientation, and the beams uh, are cumulated to focus on a single point. So the, the, the dose to the tumor is very, very high. And this, uh, this is a modern uh, gamma knife. We uh, call it. Uh, uh, profession. It is manufactured by the Elect Elector Corporation. Uh, it has 192 cobalt source uh, in eight independent scatters and 24 cobalt source uh, each, uh, each scatters. Uh, it have it have four, eight, and 16 millimeter kilometers can be combined with each scatter and uh, all the Meters are automatically adjusted. It will autom automatically focus on OR tumors. 
And uh, this is uh, also a uh, SI equipment. Uh, we call it sub -nine. I think it is very common in modern radio, radio therapy centers. Um, and it is, uh, it is combined with uh, uh, four uh, main paths, the X-ray source paths, uh, the robotic arms, line accelerators, treatment tables, and image dictators. Uh, so so uh, let's talk about something about uh, uh, the Linux based SIS equipment. As you can see in the picture, the select big picture demonstrates a uh, very Novalis TX Linux accelerator. Uh, it is uh, used, it is uh, in OR, uh, it uh, treats 100 patients uh, every day in OR centers. Um, uh, it, uh, it was a product of a uh, collaboration between two famous com uh, companies from US and Germany, the Very and the Brain Lab. Every day, uh, nearly 100 uh, patients were uh, has receiving their treatment in this uh, device. And it, and it is only the only Linux accelerators that can uh, realize non-computer uh, image guide RT. Um, so this is a, a variant edge. It uh, has a flatness, flitter uh, free uh, uh, technologies, mod up to two, uh, 2,400 mod unit per minute. Um, so uh, how, ca how can we do our SIS planning? Uh, we can use file, uh, five methods to do uh, SIS plannings. We, are, we something, sometimes use non complete arcs and dynamic arcs, static beams, IMRT, or VMAT. Uh, so it uh, all depends on your clinical uh, purpose. Uh, there is an example of stereotic radio surgery treatment of um, antivirus manifolding. So uh, let's come to the summarize of SIS. Uh, the, con the completion of various techniques. The gamma knife have sometimes uh, always have high accuracy uh, for cranial disease only. And the cone collimator better for circular, circular targets, but have elimination in some uh, targets that have irregular uh, geological uh, patients and the source change radiation safety concern. And the knife will also have high accuracy, uh, can be used both in SIS and SBRT. And uh, it uses cone collimators to deliver dose, and, but, uh, but uh, the, the treatment time may be very wrong, sometimes one hour. And the LANIC, it can deliver all types of radiation treatment Cable of conforming to all targets uh, shape, uh, both use COM and MLCs, and uh, the cost is less. And uh, and uh, with the equipment of um, EPID and uh, COM MCT, the accuracy and, uh, is within a few millimeters. Uh, and uh, let's come to the SBRT. SBRT. Uh, has been mostly applied to tumors in spine, lung, uh, penis, kidney, and prostate cancers. Uh, so, uh, the fraction dose is uh, more than five grays, and uh, uh, the we use five grays to thirty-four grays per fraction, and only uh, less than five fractions was needed. And the safety delivery is all utmost importance due to high fraction dose and a small number of fractions. Uh, let's compare to the conver conversional MRT to SBRT. Uh, when, come to, when it comes to the MRT, uh, as we say, high fraction uh, radiotherapy, the maximum uh, fraction dose is only three grades or less. But for SBRT, 
it is more than five degrees. And uh, to conventional fractionated, uh, some we use 10 or more, but in SBRT, five or less fraction was uh, used. And those distribution inside the PTV, so homogeneous was uh, constrained strictly, sometimes in 120%. But in SBRT, the homogeneous uh, was tolerance in 160%. And the dose gratitude outside PTV, in MRT, it is slowly sloped, but in SBRT, it steps slowly. So, uh, this is a demonstration of uh, SBRT, the management of tumor motion. When you, we when we use uh, SBRT technology, the tumor motion should be in good control. So uh, we use management to our tumor motion, especially in lung cancer, liver cancer, and the air. <clears throat> and this is a very uh, real-time position management system. And uh, compared with SIS, when radio surgery was used outside the CNS, it may be called a steroid body radiation therapy, as BRT or S uh, or Saber. So let's talk about something about uh, the high dose rate practice therapy. We have talked about uh, Low dose, uh, low dose, low, low dose drug therapy, uh, just not. But uh, what is the difference between the high dose rate drug therapy? So high dose uh, rate drug therapy is usually performed using a single tiny, sometimes one millimeters, multiple three millimeters, highly uh, radioactivity source uh, of iron. Nine, uh, one nine two. That is laser welded to the end of a thin, flexible, stunning steel cable. The source is housed in a device called an afterloader. So the 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 picture demonstrates a HDR remote afterloader. Uh, it is a product of the electer. Uh, uh, we use uh, we use some uh, some types of uh, applicators to, uh, to implement uh, high dose radiotherapy treatment. And the time sometimes was five to 15 minutes, depending on the clinical situation. Uh, so the, the source travels through each uh, catheter in five meter steps called the well points, the well points. Uh, the distribution of radiation and dose is determined by the well position. The source stops at, uh, at uh, and the length of the time it dwells there. Uh, so this is uh, HDR source, uh, very tiny, very small, uh, sometimes uh, 3.5 to 5, multiple 0 0.5 to 1 millimeters. And the depth size is one to five millimeters. Uh, and the iron 192 uh, is usually used uh, in, HD, uh, in HDR source. The half, uh, half life was uh, is 74 days. And the average photon energy is 380 uh, keV. And sometimes we use COVID 16s. Uh, there are four steps to impediment the HDR treatment. The first one is uh, impediment uh, placement. The second one is simulation. And the third one was mm, dosimetry. And third one is treatment. Um, so uh, we come to the IGRT. Uh, generally speaking, in, in measured guided radiation therapy may be defined as a radiation therapy procedure that use image guidance at various stages of its process. Uh, patient data acquisition, treatment planning, treatment simulation, patient setup, and the target localization before and during treatment. 
And uh, the main image guidance technology have uh, one, the portal and the radiographic images. The second one is in-room CT scanners. And third one is uh, KV Combium CT. And, this, and the last one was the MOF voltage Combium CT. Uh, this is this is uh, uh, KV carbon CT and this is the multi uh, voltage carbon CT. So uh, you see uh, there there is a lung cancer case. Uh, the management of this patient motion was very uh, important in in the IGRT. Uh, we use a four D CT. To acquire CT scanners with the patient respiration phase, so we can uh, determine the ITV for a patient. Um, second one was real time tumor tracking to detect the resp uh, respiration motion and the dynamic and the dynamically representing the radiation beam in order to follow the tumor's changing position. And the third one was use uh, electromagic field checks, the so real-time localization of electromagic transport uh, beam cones impediment into the tumor. But the dose not involves the use of ionization radiation. Uh, it, it is a very outstanding and sophisticated technologies. And uh, Finally, uh, let's talk about something about the adaptive radiation therapy. Adaptive radiation therapy is a state-of-the-art approach that uses a feedback process to account for patient specific automatic uh, or biological changes. So delivering high individualized uh, radiation therapy for cancer patients. So the basic components of the ART include three aspects. The first one is to detection of and anatomic and biological change, often facilitated by multi-delities multi images. The second one was treatment planning optimization to account for the patient's specific spatial, many average or biological change with consideration of radiation response. And third one, the last one, is technologies to predict, to, to precisely deliver the optimized, the optimized plan to the patient. And uh, this slide demonstrates the workflow of the ART. Uh, so it, maybe it is very complex and time consuming, but it will, will help for a precise, uh, well, very precise treatment. Uh, we have main three uh, workflows. The first one is uh, a typical workflow of that adaptive. And second one is an, uh, an example of online uh, process. And third one is an example of offline AIT process. Uh, the, uh, the dosimetry impacts all three dimensional motion in the tumor during the uh, liver steroidic uh, radiation therapy. So this, this is the planned and with inline adaptive. And without inline adaptive, we, we can find a dose uh, shift. A dose shift, it's very, very uh, critical, uh, especially in SDRT. So the so biological, uh, biologically adapted radiation therapy uh, we can use radio resistance, radio resistance mechanisms, the functional images, the PET CT, and the imaging, uh, imaging pyramids, and the prescription function in the biological adaptive RT. So it, it is very sophisticated and not a common technique used nowadays. So uh, finally, uh, we come to the proton beam therapy. Um, proton therapy, also called the proton beam therapy, is a type of radiation therapy. Uh, it it uses uh, proton rather than X-rays to treat cancer. Like X-ray radiation, proton therapy is a type of 
external beam radiation therapy, it uh, uh, it painlessly deliver radiation through the skin from a machine outside the body. Uh, so with proton therapy, there is less radiation dose outside the tumor. In regular radiation therapy, X-rays continue to give radiation dose as they leave the person's body. This means that radiation damage nearby healthy tissue possibly causing side efforts. Um, uh, so uh, there is a black peak in the uh, in the pro proton therapy. So can anyone uh, uh, tell me the mechanism of the black peak? Uh, when a first uh, charge, when a fast charge of particles move through the matters, it uh, I know I know uh, amounts of the ultimates of the material and uh, deposit a dose along its pace. A peak cause because the interaction cross section interacts as the change as the charge of the particles energy decrease energy lost by charge of the particles is inversely proportional to the square of their velocity which explains the peak occurring just uh, uh, before the particle comes to a complete stop so we can see a black peak in the in the face in the pace of a uh, uh, proton therapy uh, so we can uh, give you some compressions between the imrt and the proton therapies the left list was uh, were imrt and the, and the second list was proton therapy we can see good uh, normal tissue sparing when the proton therapy was used and uh, uh, and uh, and there is a uh, practical therapy facilities in in clinical operation. Uh, the data was updated uh, August uh, August just uh, last uh, month, and uh, till now there are eight practical centers all over the world. The UK and China are the top two countries in the list, followed by France and Australia. Uh, thank you very much, thank you, thanks for your time, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for Dr. Lee for the wonderful talk. So he really gave us the clear idea how the technology or radiation oncology technology developed from the 3D CRT to MRT, uh, at least to the IMRT, uh, IGRT adaptive radiotherapy related kind to the particle therapy with the proton and the carbon. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. So now uh, we'll move on our third speaker. I will give a brief introduction. He's uh, Dr. Jing Fu. He's the chief uh, medical physicist, also the uh, deputy director of the cancer uh, radiation Radiation Therapy Center in Chongqing University Cancer Hospital. Uh, his main research interest is uh, high energy physics and tumor uh, radiotherapy. Uh, also in the field of uh, tumor uh, the modeling of the organ motion or automatic planning of quality and control. Uh, he is going to give us a talk about uh, the modern radiotherapy technology and the machines. Uh, uh, let's welcome. I will share you unshare your screen, please. I'm Fujin. It's my pleasure to give a presentation about the therapy techniques and machines. Before I start, we should answer these questions. First, what is radiation therapy? What is radiotherapy? Radiation therapy, also called radiotherapy, is a technique of cancer treatment. It uses a high dose of radiation to kill cancer cells and shrink 
tumors. At the low dose, radiation is often used as X-ray to see inside the body and take pictures. We can call this method as image guided radiation therapy. Secondly, how is radiation therapy given? There are two kinds of radiation therapy. The first is external beam radiation therapy. The second is internal radiation therapy. External beam involves a machine outside the body that aims radiation and cancer cells. Internal radiation therapy involves placing radiation inside the body, in or near the cancer. Today, we only talk about external beam radiation therapy. As we know, radiation not only kills also the growth of cancer cells, it can also affect the nearby health cells. So we need advanced techniques and machines to maximize the ability of killing cancer and minimize the damage to the normal cells. Of course, the radiotherapy machine is not like the picture on the bottom right side. It's more complex. A medical linear accelerator is a device most commonly used for external beam radiation treatments. It, del it delivers high energy X rays of electrons to the region of the patient tumor. This slide shows some linear accelerators we used. It can have a C-shaped country or O-shaped country. At this country, it is around the central axis. Also, the link can be mounted to a robotic arm, so we have more choice for radiation angles just changing the arm positions. Besides photo and electrons, we can use a hydro for cancer treatment, for example, we can use neutron, meson, proton, carbons. Hydrons have different characteristics, such as energy deposits and relative biology effect. So, this presentation will have four parts. Firstly, we will talk about the C ship or O ship Linux and conventional techniques. Secondly, we will discuss the CT or MR guided radio therapy. Finally, we will talk about proton and hydron therapy. In radiation therapy, the majority of radiation treatments use X ray and a small number use the electron beam or a combination of both therapies. Electron beams are specially used for superficial tumors. For this reason, many of the linear-based RT machines pro provide the option of using photon beams as well as electron beams for cancer treatments. In X ray therapy, they can produce photon beams in the region 4 to 25 mF. And in the electron therapy, the treatment electron beam can cover the reach of a 6 to 25 mF. The length of the linear depends on the finite electron kinetic energy and the rate from 30 cm for 4 to 6 mF nanox to 150 cm for the 25 mF nanox. There are two basic configurations for the radiotherapy Linux machine. In Fig A, the Linux is mounted in the machine's country, perpendicular to the patient. This is the sim simplest configuration. It emanates it emanates the need for an intricate beam transport system. This is typically used in phototherapy for transformed energy before between four and six months. On the other hand, in high energy machines, the accelerator is longer. It can be located in the machine country parallel to the country axis of rotation. You can see in Fig B. For external beam radiation, a tricate beam transport system is used for to transport the electron beam from accelerator to the trim head. This configuration is usually used in the same machine deliver both X-ray or electron beams and at multiple energy up to 25 mF. Multi-difficultimeter is becoming the main tool for beam shaping on the linear accelerator. It's a simple and useful system in the preparation and performance of the radio therapy. On the left side, we show you a schematic of a generic MLC. 
We can use MSU to pop Mr. Dimension no couple mode the survey, it does be modulated to the survey, and one match modulated arc survey. All of these techniques emit batch norm tissue sperm high dose to target impossible models in the production. As we know, a SPRT is just a technique which can deliver large dose in a few fractions. The major feature of SPRT is to deliver a large dose in a few fractions, which results in high biological infant dose. In order to minimize the known tissue toxicity, confirmation of high dose to target a rapid follow-up dose away from target is critical. Besides these major features, the answer characteristics, for example, the fruit use a non complement beam, non -com beam arrangement small or no beam margin for beam bone, and the use in homogeneous dose distribution. We can use gamma knife, some knife Linux with high resolution MLC, or combined with a comb to perform SBRT. Traditionally, Reduction beam provides are made to be flanged for ease of those computations. However, with the development of MIT at WMAX, the beam flat is no longer necessary, so the flat flattening field is removed from beam pass to generate triple F X3. It can increase those it can increase those rate up to four times that of standard flanged beams. Also, it can shorten treatment time with potential benefit in augmentation management and patient comfort. Also, it can use x more efficiently. Today, modern linear accelerators are capable of automating motion, motion around the multiple axes, allowing efficient delivery of highly known compliant radio therapy techniques. Conventional CM Linux achieves this by rotating the patient patient around this as you said on train the to a different position for each beam or orientation. As for some type, the robotic manipulate works with a three-dimensional space. The workspace is composed of precise nodes from which the manipulator can develop radiation. The additional degrees freedom are sure to increase the therapeutic ratio. As a three dose escalation to the target or those reduction in organ at risk. But this technique may be need more delivery time. So let's move to the second part. In this part, I want to discuss two main Linux. The first is a Hester and the second is Tom Therapy. In 2017, Vera released Hester, a fast routine system with all remote, it utilizes a six month triple photo beams and KV and MOA CPCD major. A high quality and relative CPCD reconstruction algorithm was presented. The maximum dose rate is 800 units per minute. The, prim the primary and secondary kilometers are highly are fixed in place. So, Hansen has no beam shape draws, but it has a uh, stack and, uh, but it has a uh, stack it and a uh, uh, stage dual layer MLC system. This design can offer fast beam mobilizations and substantially reduce linkage between MLCs. So the MLC is the only beam shape component. The positioning is very important for accurate dose delivery. <laughs> this table details a compar comparison between the new MLC system to the commonly, com commonly available system. We can find there are a lot of different speeds. For example, the new MLC has double leaf velocity at four fold leaf acceleration. So next, we have a new question. Is any dose metric advantage of a higher because of the new MSA system? After comparison between higher and triology for 30 MRT plans for, from cervical cancer, we find that the dose distribution of PTV should no significant difference. 
and the mean dose of organ at risk was significantly reduced. Also, high cell increased the number of monthly units and decreased the delivery time. Let's look at the last dosimetric study. It compared the women with prostate as blood plans between healthy and true melanic. For comparison, all plans use the same number of full arcs, identical kilometer rotations, and arc geometry. The high cell place showed no stand. The statistic difference in target coverage at the conformity compared to true beam plans. The minimum dose to PDV was slightly better in high sand plan. The DVH for target was just high sand pro provides slightly better normal tissue sparing. Compared to high sand, the true beam did have a slight high total MU compared to high, high beam modulation. So it highlights an added benefit of treating pro prostate SBRT on the high side instead of a traditional amnetic. For lung cancer, there is a group of to perform a comparison study between non-compliant acts and on true and compliant plants on high side. They found that high side properties touch for um, 15 15% of center acidosis distribution similar to true beam. So Hansen was just for long as bad treatments use abdominal compression on for the city based treatment planning. Tomotherapy is another old renic. It consists of small six MV nanics mounted on three gums that rotates around the Patient. The country rotation is compared with uh, a, prog a progressive movement of a treatment table. Both the country period and the uh, country velocity are constant. constant. The MS works in a binary fashion, and the if individual if can be fully open and fully closed. The full open and closed cycle lasts only 20 mini seconds. So, for helical tongue therapy, the radiation source rotates from the patient along the helical path. Also, radiation can be delivered by means of direct method. It's called direct radiation. The beam has a foam shape. The field weighs uh, 47 meters. The draw set increases the beam weight of eyes of 1 cm, 2.5 cm, 5 cm. The latest term therapy can enable to use both treatment paper motion variable in time and dynamic draws. In this module, straw weights can change from 1 cm to 4, 5 cm, just like this figure should. Dynamic draws open and close around each target and improve those penumbra in super and in in production. As we know, tom therapy was used in many cases. It has a lot of dosimetric advantage. If we compare high cell with tom, tom therapy, which one has a bad dose distribution? One group performed a treatment planning study on cervix uterine cancer. The dose to PDV was 45 degree. For patients with positive lymph nodes, a simultaneously integrated boost up to 55 degree was used. We met plans was, were performed on health care. Finally, different levels of sparing was observed for the bones. Health care can protect better in the high dose region and the tom therapy in the middle low dose region. Okay, let's move the third part. Nowadays, Image guided radiotherapy has been widely used to improve curious and reproducibility of patient position. Usually, the electronic body image devices are core beam CT are the main devices. The application image imaging focuses uh, three aspects. The first is accurate target delineation. The second is a treatment response assessment. And the third is accurate and precise treatment delivery. As we know, MI images have a super soft tissue contrast. It can have a cushioned target definition. 
Also, the function imaging can enable access assess the treatment response to current grammar with analytic. Today, the several analytic is currently be implemented to cover both low and high magnetic magnetic uh, magnetic field stress and two beam field rotations. This picture shows the uh, analytic at uh, one point five Tesla. It's a six analytic mounted on the table country around the MR magnet. The radiation aesthetic is, a, is at the center, center of an MR image volume, so the lady can need to be modified to make it uh, comparable with MR. And the MR system also needed to be modified to minimize the material in the beam pass and to minimize the magnetic field and the lineage. This system has several key features. For example, the superconducting cones are put aside as the graded cones are split to allow beam passage. So, what clinical benefits could I build into IGRT? First, due to super soft tooth contrast, we can incorporate MR for simulation and treatment planning, like the reproducible millimeter. Occurs in soft tooth definition. The function image allows those paid into the high risk tumor volumes for greater tumor control. Second, real time MRI image allows time and critical structure localization and tracking based on gold standard anatomy result rather than filtration markers, bone anatomy, or other surrogate as in CT. Certainly, Neutral fraction and domain and form and functional image allows easily evaluation to human response and bacteria treatment is escalation and de escalation to improve tumor control or treatment toxicity. So we can also integrate CT with the LINAC. In China, the United Imaging Cooperation developed an integrated CT LINAC. They can change patient position from scan mode to treatment mode easily. And this system has integrated RT workflow, including CT simulation, planning, assessment, assessment, scanning, agent work, verification, and dose delivery. This table shows some parameters of CT Linux. We can find it's a CR Linux integrated CT slash adequacy. The ball sense is 70 cm in damage. Due to the low dose of CT scanning, so it's possible to make a daily adjective with, without the cost of those two OLR. Also, the CT scanning was fast only a few seconds, so the image registration between plan CT images and daily CT images is much faster and accurate. The cumulative dose and treatment response can be easily evaluated. Nowadays, artificial intelligence has been incorporated into CT Linux workflow. For example, out country, out planning, out quality assurance. So, in the University Shanghai Cancer Center, the group of British College combined AI techniques with CT Linux system to make the radiotherapy more efficient. The process only takes about 20 minutes. 20 minutes from CT positioning, positioning to the end of a single treatment. Maybe it's one of the important directions, directions for radiation therapy development in the future. Finally, let's move to the fourth part. Before I start, we should understand the concept of linear energy transfer. Linear energy transfer is your amateur energy deposit put into pass lungs along the track along the track and analyze particle. Protons and photons and low LED radiation have similar biological effectiveness. Neutrons and ions have high LED radiation, have high biological, biological effectiveness in principle. Proton therapy offers a substantial clinical advantage over the conventional proton therapy. Photon therapy is due to the unique depth those characteristics of products which can be explored to achieve significant reductions in normal tissue dose proximal and distal to the target volume. This may allow escalation of tumor dose with spiral normal tissue 
Number two, thus potentially improve local control and survival while reduce toxicity and improve quality life. The therapeutic energies proton typically in the region of uh, 17 to 250 months. Normally, more energetic beams of proton can be produced using uh, cyclotron or synchrotron. Mm, synchrotron. They are transported to the treatment room. The initial C beams of protons are spread laterally and longitudinally and shaped properly to deliver treatment. Spreading and shaping can be achieved by electron mechanical means to treat the patient with passively scattered proton therapy or use magne mag uh, magnetic, or the magnetic scanning of C beam nature of protons. Of sequencing initial energies, the lateral technique can be used to treat patients with optimized in density modulated proton therapy. It's the most powerful proton modality. Additionally, carbon hydrate therapy often superdoses conformity in the treatment deep CT tumors compared with conventional X-ray therapy. Also, common eye beams have a high reactive biological effectiveness compared with protons or X-ray beams. Energy deposition of carbon ion beams increase with the penetration depth up to the sharp max at the end the energy. It's the black peak. Because, because of the adrenaline peak is too narrow and sharp to complete cover the target. Bonding of the natural peak according to the size of the tumor is used in cancer treatment. However, the latter follow around the target is deep with the carbon ion beams, the proton beams. In the region beams, uh, beyond the distal end of the peak, most nodules is deposited with, uh, with, with the protons, while small nodules is deposited with carbon ions. However, as the proton and couples and therapy have several limitations, so in order to demonstrate the true potential of hydrogen therapy that's needed for further research and development. Thank you for listening. Guys, if anyone still have any questions, please email me, email me and this dress. Okay, uh, thanks for the three talkers. They actually talk about the evolution of our medical physics from different angles and they give us uh, maybe some overlap, but actually they have a focus on different respects, respects of the, our medical physics from the history, technology, and the uh, machine equipment. So now, uh, Let's move on to uh, some questions. Uh, I see there are some questions. I will show my screen. I, I already... Uh, I hope you can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for the first question, uh, how to get fund easily for PhD in medical physics theory? Uh, what types will help to get the scholarship? I think this is two, two kind of questions. Uh, Alan, would you like to comment on something like this? This, this depends upon where the, he is applying for the university uh, because uh, neither IOMP, neither NMO, neither AFOM can provide uh, the funds for doing PhD. It is the university where he applies or uh, funding agencies like uh, the, uh, the uh, German uh, funding agencies like uh, fellowship, other fellowship that is possible uh, or a guide has got any fund he can uh, do the projects. Yeah, I think the score, scholarship is another different thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Scholarship is... 
So next you can take the question. Next yeah, question. yeah, next is uh, how can I get help from iPhone for uh, making the good research publication? Form to arrange the uh, lectures, the uh, school for how to write, uh, conduct good research, how to write good papers, how to publish that uh, uh, one or two webinars can be arranged. And uh, but uh, the, uh, see, it is the teacher, mentor, it can help how to publish. Yeah, actually, I think for a research. We have official publication uh, journals, right? Maybe uh, you can send some research to the manuscript to our uh, official journals of a phone. So the editors there maybe help to improve your uh, manuscript, uh, manuscript. So now uh, another question is, uh, is there a special institution that accredits medical physics education programs at each university in Asia and the Oceania so that graduate can become medical physicists? Uh, well, this uh, program will be uh, accredited by the campus. Uh, uh, I work, yeah, you, you first. Uh, there are more than 110 institutions in AFOM who are conducting the Masters in Medical Physics, and the entire list is available on the right. Some courses in Malaysia are campus accredited. In Korea, they are accredited by OMP or their own accreditation board. In Australia, they have got their own accreditation board. So every country has internationally, yes, uh, the IOMP is accrediting, MPEP also accredits. Uh, so the list is available on the IOMP. Just a few days only I've updated that thing. And in uh, uh, Asia also, the list is available. On the IOMP website, if you go to the education, the graduate courses, uh, country-wise, region-wise, uh, almost 300 courses across the world in MEPOM, in FOM, in EFOM, uh, in ALFIN region, uh, in USA, all have been actually given on this thing by the ETC, myself as the ETC chair of the IOMP. Uh, yes, I, I think you also answered the second question. I think uh, the IMPCB, uh, the International Certification Board for Medical Physics is also can uh, certificate the uh, individual medical physics. Yeah, who is not uh, uh, study in a certificated program. So you can also uh, apply some individual certificate from the IMPCB. And during AOCMP, there will be again the test and examination. Online examination also is taking IMPCB. So uh, whosoever he has asked the question, visit the IMPCB website. All the details are there online as well as uh, uh, during AOCMP. Yes, okay. Uh, next question is to who and me, okay. Uh, are Wenzhou Medical University and the Fudan University accredited to be able to continue the medical physical education program in master and doctor level? Yes, we both are, we, we are both able to offer the education uh, training program in the, for medical fix in master and uh, uh, doctorate degree. Actually, I do have a, a PhD students from Pakistan. He's pursuing his PhD uh, under my supervision. So also for school, yeah, we do have scholarships, especially for international students. You can uh, apply through the, our website, I think it's well, you can search for Wenzhou Medical University. We have uh, some uh, international uh, programs for international students apply for with the uh, medical uh, medicine or medical physics. We do have. Actually, I think it was under engineering uh, program something. Uh, Take an overdose of uh, paracetamol. Uh, this is a painkiller, right? It causes serious damage to the liver. 
leads to liver failure. So the only way to control is transplantation of the liver. So this is, I know, I don't know this question, Dr. Aaron. No, uh, see, uh, radiation solve this situation, do some research. You have to search into the uh, PubMed and things. It is nothing related with our uh, uh, today's webinar. Yeah, I think it's out of control. <laughs> next one, you can go. Ahead. Yeah, next, I think there's one more question. Is there any research project hosting by a phone participant for the fund? Already or done do it. A phone doesn't do that. Right. We don't do this, right? Okay, yeah, actually, we do not have the, some research funding from a phone to hosting by all phone. A phone, right? Uh, yeah, I think that that's. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, it's almost time. It's, it's here all for today's uh, webinar. Okay, all your own yours. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Jin Xians, for uh, arranging this FOM school webinar and conducting and moderating this thing. Thanks to Professor Wengong Hu, Professor Jidong uh, Li, and Fu Jin for excellent talks. Uh, now, the, as you know, monthly, we are organizing uh, the FOM monthly webinars. And now next webinar is on 7th October, 2021. Uh, Professor Tai Suk Su will be talking on image guided applications in the radiation therapy and Michael Lee will be moderator. Uh, you can visit the APOM website and the flyer you can register for uh, this uh, APOM monthly webinar. Then uh, next month, 23rd October, we have APOM school fifth virtual webinar, same time. It will be on dosimetry and quality control in diagnostic radiology and speakers will be Professor Asun Anupama Azari, who is the Secretary General of the uh, FOM, uh, Dr. Jay Singham from Sri Lanka, and then Catherine Ints from Germany, Professor Gulam Jakaria from Germany. So this is on 23rd October from 6.30 a.m. GMT to about 9 a.m. GMT. So this is our webinar. And as I told, UOCMP 2021 will be now in a hybrid Congress from 10 to 12 December. And the venue, as I talked, is now in uh, Dhaka. All the details are there for online, very less registration fee for the students and the regular and early bird SARC countries it is there. Uh, the last date for submission of the abstract is 20th of September. And um, for students, uh, uh, if abstract is accepted, the waiver of the registration fee also is planned. But first criteria is you have to submit uh, the, uh, the uh, abstract. So uh, uh, with these things, uh, FOM is doing a lot of activities. As far as the education is concerned, uh, we cannot provide the uh, the grants for the PhD or something like that, but any request, any feedback comes accordingly, we can act. A lot of awards have been started. Please do visit a form. And uh, once again, I thank uh, uh, Professor Jin Xians, all the speakers of today's a form school webinar. Again, uh, Wengong Fu, uh, Jidong Li, and Fu Jin, and all the a delegate participant for making this conference successful. Thanks to all the FOM, XCOM, Rajini for uh, uh, the lot of assistance and help, Chai Hong for taking care of uh, the PRC. With these things, I close uh, the today's FOM webinar, thanking each one of you for making this uh, successful. We meet next FOM webinar in October first week and then on 23rd October, they are from school. Have a safe time, stay safe. Thank you very Thank much. Bye-bye.